Good evening, everyone. We'll call the Hayward and Iowa City Council to order at 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday, June the 8th, 2022. Again, opportunities to address the council will be in uh, agenda item 1C, open business from the community. If you do not have an agenda as you came in, they're near the entry doors. Also, there will be a public hearing on the final disposition of industrial park track number 4. The public hearing is agenda item number 4A. We start with 1A, approval of the May 25th, 2022 regular City Council meeting minutes. Is there a motion for that approval? So moved. Moved by John. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Travis. All in favor then of the approval of the May 25th, 2022 regular City Council meeting minutes, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, that passes 5 to 0, Jacob. Approval of June 8, 2022 claims for payment. We'll start to my right with Monty for questions. No. Nope. Okay. Travis, any questions? None, thank you. Okay, John? None, thank you. Patty? None, thank you. Rob? No questions. Okay, is there a motion for the claims for payment for June 8th? So moved. Moved by John. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Rob. All in favor then of the claims for payment say aye. 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 Those opposed? Again, that passes five to zero. This time is open business from the community. Does anyone wish to address the council? Hearing none, we'll move to the mayor's report. Uh, just my uh, thanks to everyone that helped with Katie Anderson's fundraiser. We have a very caring community, those that put it all together, those that uh, donated to it, and those that attended. Makes me feel uh, very, uh, very nice to live in Haywarden where people care for every individual here. So thank you, all of those folks. We'll move to staff reports and we'll start with Jacob with anything, please. So as we get closer to the end of June, I am closing out this uh, financial year and our fiscal year and I am getting ready to start prepping for our audit and starting the initial talks with our auditors for that. Okay, thank you. Travis, please. I've got some more information on the projected outages that may occur this summer um, through SPP, um, Southwest Power Pool. Um, they have three levels of energy emergency alerts that they will put out uh, during a time of high demand and um, low operation or electricity. Um, level one is just they foresee the conditions. It's there's a high load. It's really hot. The wind's not blowing. Um, so they'll put out that level one. Um, then it could go to a level two, which means they're requesting um, utilities um, and municipals to um, conserve electricity, run your demand response programs. Um, and then level three. Um, outages pretty much are imminent are imminent um, that they'll be shedding load which is a nice way of saying they'll be having outages um, there's many causes for these notifications major reasons that i was given are that we're accelerating closing coal and nuclear plants and those are generating plants that you can just turn on and and run at, at a um, short notice um, and the rising cost of natural gas prices may hinder some natural gas generation to run um, our reliance on wind and solar, which is great 90% of the time, you know, can't be relied upon 100% of the time. Um, another reason is the drought across the Midwest. I know our dams are not producing at their peak capacity at this time. Um, we'll be notified by MRAS when these alerts occur, and I'm working on a notification plan for businesses and residents. I'd like to come up with a, like a cell, cell phone notification, but that means people have to sign up for it. So, um, yeah, we're just working through that plan. Um, some businesses may um, require phone calls, some with sensitive loads, um, so they can shut down. So we'll, uh, keep notifying and, and keep up with that plan. 
The Haywarden pool has, have a, has issues with cloudy water. This has caused the pool to not open or close early. This is a safety issue um, with not being able to see the deep end in the diving pool area. Unfortunately, we can't just close that section of the pool and, and keep the rest open um, for liability. I mean, it's, it's a safety issue. But I, I have ordered some clarifier that we can put in the pool that'll help with those uh, small particles um, and help them bond together and, and sink to the bottom so it can get through our filter. Right now they're so fine that um, it's clouding the water and it's not making it through the filter. So um, we've never had to use clarifier before, so um, I'm hoping it works. I, I reached out to ACO. It's a company that um, has helped us with our filters and helped us with our pool quite a bit. And they recommended uh, that we try this. Um, so a lot of a lot of pools get it in the spring and they kind of use it right away to, to clear up that issue. So hopefully tomorrow we'll see a see an improvement. We can keep the pool open. Is it, it is open now. It is not open oh, right now. Oh, it is not open now. Okay. It was open for an hour today. It was open the day before. It was only open for an hour today. Okay. Um, basically, we we just keep an eye on that area, and if it gets too cloudy where you can't can't see them going in, we we'll just have to close. Um, okay. But we we okay. like to open so that that water gets stirred up by the kids, and then it does get through the filter. Because if you just let it sit and try and get it with the vacuum, then it's not going through the filter as much after you get it stirred up. So it's kind of counterintuitive. You want the kids in there to stir it up, but then once they stir it up, then you can't, you can't see the deep end. So okay. as long as I um, understand it. Yeah, we're, we're working on it. I've reached out and tried to find solutions to the problem, so. Thanks, Travis. Wanda? I don't have anything tonight, Rick. Okay, thank you. Jenny? Nothing, thank you. Okay, thank you. Corey? Uh, <clears throat> just let everybody know we are accepting applications for a full-time position again. Um, Stephanie Arroyo has resigned. Uh, her last deal will be Saturday, and she's going to be um, furthering her career down in Sioux City working in the records department or something to that effect. So we wish her all the best, and anybody looking to get a full-time job at the police department, have them stop by, and we'll get them an application. Thank you. Carol? Um, just a couple things. Um, we were fortunate to get $25,000 awarded to the City of Haywarden on the, from the Haywarden Foundation grant for some new tables and chairs in the community center, which are much needed. Um, I would like to invite all the council members um, to lunch with the T-Bone Trail um, with JJ on Monday. We're going to be at the golf course at noon. Um, then um, after that we're going to actually do some touring but we will be having dinner at Trattoria in Ireton so if someone would like to join then I'm not sh exactly sure what time we're going to show up there but it'll be somewhere around six so if you, anybody could join that'd be awesome um, tomorrow I'm going to Council Bluffs for some financial and technical assistance um, for brownfield redevelopment um, brownfields are as you guys probably know, just our areas where old gas stations sat, where junkyards were. Um, we seem to have a few areas here in Haywarden that could be cleaned up and reused or revitalized. So I'm going to go and hopefully get us some money for that. Um, we've had a lot of activity, which we're going to talk about later in the industrial lots. Um, and uh, quite a few businesses have been moving um, around a little bit. So it's been very exciting um, at my office. Thank you very much. Any questions for staff or council comments at this point? Hearing none, we'll move to other, other agenda items. A discussion approval of the building permit for Central Cafe, Jen McVeigh. Uh, we'll start with Wanda for this discussion. <clears throat> Thanks, Rick. Just a little bit of a background. So per the code, the property located in the fire zone, which is our downtown area, needs the approval of the council on the building permit. It's very unique. That's the only property or the only area of town that requires that. So that's why it's in your packet tonight. Um, as you're all aware, the McVeighs have been through a very long process trying to rebuild their business. And once they decided to rebuild in the same spot, we had to stabilize the Central Park 
central parts building. Um, in your packet, you saw the APEX structural design report, which was from their insurance company outlining what was wrong with uh, the central parts building. Um, the emergency catalyst grant that Carol worked on helped um, in the process of stabilizing that building in order for um, any building to happen, any building to happen on the central cafe piece of ground, that building had to be stabilized first. Um, so the funds for that um, have been secured and I believe that work has already started on that. Um, also in your packet, you saw reports from Geotech and Rise Structural Reports. Those involved soil samples of the Central Cafe property and um, so soil samples on the fill and the demo materials in that uh, site. So um, that's the background on that and we will let Casey talk about the project. What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we want to obviously rebuild there, the McVeighs do. Um, and you'll see some drawings probably in your packet of um, dimensions, uh, layouts, stuff like that. Um, the front of the building will attach completely all the way through, so it'll look like it kind of ties into downtown, but the building will not tie to the north and south buildings. Uh, we're going to leave about two to three feet of space there in between the buildings. Um, there already was six feet to the north originally, so we kind of balance that out and put it in the middle is what we're proposing. Um, but as you can see from that drawing there, and that maybe isn't exactly realistic, but it will go fairly high and tie in square front there. Um, yeah, as you probably see in the geotech report, we need to do a little excavating for the foundation, get some of them soils out of there that aren't packed properly and repack stuff and get good footings. Um, yeah, it's really about it, I guess. It's gonna, it's gonna kind of resemble what it used to be. I think that's kind of Jen's thoughts too, is kind of keep it a little bit of original of what it was, just a little new, more modern and, and uh, updated. So, um, I'll save you, Casey. So moved. <coughs> Thanks, Doc. <laughs> I'll second it. And a motion by Monty, seconded by Patty, to approve the building permit for Central Cafe. Uh, Jen had uh, originally we were going to do a voice vote, but Jen requested a roll call vote. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Why? Roll call vote, please, for the approval of the building permit for Central Cafe. <laughs> Olson. Aye. Clucky. Aye. Harvey. Yep. Feldacker. Aye. Anderson. Aye. On a five to zero roll call vote, we're very pleased to approve the building permit for Central Cafe. Good luck again. Thank you for rebuilding in our community. Good luck. I know you still have a lot of work ahead of you, but everybody, everyone will be excited that it's back up and running in the same place. Move to agenda item number four uh, would be a public hearing uh, for the final disposition of industrial park track number four, followed by a resolution authorizing the final disposition. I understand this is also uh, dealing with Casey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give an I ain't saving that. you this time, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, would you just give us an overview before we move into the public hearing, please? Of what we're doing there? Yes. Uh, Adam Waterman and I bought that piece of ground. We're going to build some shop condos. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with those or not, but they'll be heated shop space for lease or sale. More, most likely our plan is to lease them for now. We'll gauge interest. Uh, we're going to do six units and kind of see how that goes if there's interest in uh, businesses filling them or, or leasing them or whatever it may be. So it's kind of the thought process there. Okay. Questions of Casey before we go to the public hearing? No. Mm -mm. Not for me. Okay. Open the public hearing for the final disposition of Hayward Industrial Park Track number four. Does anyone have any comments? Did we receive any comments at the city office in regards to this disposition? 
We did not, but I want to correct the resolution at this point. It says outlot 25. It should be outlot 3. So we make sure that our public hearing reflects that. It was published correctly in the paper. We just have it incorrect on the resolution. Okay, so during the public hearing, the resolution 2022-20 will be the outlet number three. Correct. Okay. Comments from council on the public hearing. Close the public hearing, moving to resolution 2022-20, authorizing the final disposition for outlet number three. Is there a motion for that approval? So moved. Moved by Travis. Is there a second? No second. second. Seconded by John. Roll call vote, please. Resolution 2022-20. Harvey. Yes. Anderson. Aye. Feldhacker. Aye. Olson. Aye. Clocky. Aye. Again, we're pleased on a 5-0 to zero vote that Resolution 2022-20 passes. Thank you, Casey, and to Adam for your investment in our community. Agenda item number five, resolution 2022-21, proposing to dispose of real estate property. Published notice for the Hayward Industrial Park Track 17 and 22 to B and P construction. Wanda or Carol, give us some direction. Carol there. will speak to this. Um, we have a company of a couple of guys, um, Adam Poole and um, Bo Boyer. They are going to build a shop for their um, construction company they are going to try to maybe expand a little bit um, in that area they're pretty excited to get going um, it's pretty straightforward so moved there's been a motion by Travis is there a second a second seconded by Patty this is for resolution 2022 21 dispose of property and publish the notice of public hearing roll call vote please for this resolution Clucky aye Feldhacker Aye. Anderson? Aye. Harvey? Yep. Olson? Aye. Again, on a 5-0 to zero roll call vote, Resolution 2022-21 passes. Public hearing will be the next time. Agenda item number six, discussion of the 2022 City of Hayward Personnel and Policy Manual. Wanda, please. Okay. So in your packet is the old... Um, it isn't that, that old. It was updated in November of last year. There are some changes that we would like to make to the personnel policy. Tonight is just discussion. We're not asking you to make a vote on that um, because it is a lot of information. So um, as we go through each of one of these, if you have questions and or would like to make changes to them, please let me know. So get to the right page here. Sorry. Okay, so the first one is on volunteer service, section 5.7. Um, we wanted to give some direction to staff on um, if they are a volunteer in either the Haywarden Fire Department or the Haywarden Ambulance um, as to how that should be handled in um, when they're on call on the weekends. So after we had discussion with uh, the department heads and um, some of our foremen, we are recommending that if they are on call on the weekend, that they not answer a page because if they, for example, would be out um, on mutual aid and they're 20 to 30 miles out of town, it's pretty hard for them to get back in, um, in that situation if they have a, um, something that needs to be taken care of back here when they're in an on-call situation. If they are not on call um, and it's on the weekends or at night, they're more than welcome to answer to that page. We're not going to dictate that, obviously. Any questions on that? Seems a little disingenuous to me. As far as? Well, we ask people to volunteer and we ask employers to let their people go. And now we say, except our people, they can't go. We're just asking for a specific time when they're on call. I understand what you're asking. Yep. I'm just saying there should be some discretion in this. I mean, this is a small community. Nobody expects them to, to the fire department to go to, to leave town for a grass fire. 
But if there's a building on fire in town and, and it's all hands, then I expect everybody to show up. And it depends upon the department because some of the departments, if they're on call, have scheduled things that they have to do. So that's why we want to be a I just saying that yep, there should be some saying. discretion yep. on both sides of this issue. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I don't think we need eight people to make an ambulance run to haul some old lady to Sioux City either. And I don't think we need 12 people to go on a fire department run to put out a fire. Right. Uh, ditch fire. Ditch fire, yeah. right. right. But I also think that we can't just arbitrarily say you have to stay here no matter what if downtown is on fire. And they would be in town anyway. So if they're in town, they would be able to help if that's what you're if that's what you're saying. Doesn't say that. Our biggest fear was if they're on call. I understand what your biggest fear is, and I'm just can saying there should be some discretion. But right, but can I finish? So if they are in town and the fire is in town, are you saying that you want them to be able to be able to fight that fire what what we're trying to do is give some consistency so they don't need to check with their supervisor whether they should answer to that page or not does that make we're trying to yeah yes may i answer yep you certainly yes may. but your default answer is no and i'm not sure that's a good answer okay so how would you like us to approach this uh, if you know we trust them with common sense then i hope they make up their minds nobody <laughs> wants you to go answer. <laughs> no one wants them to go to a mutual aid scene. Hopefully they know that. However, I do want them to come to my house if it's burning, please. Okay, so how do you want us to put that in the policy? I didn't realize it had to be in the policy. Well, I think we need to give them direction. I mean, we can scale this. I think this. we can give them direction without making it a mandated policy. Okay, so how would you like to do that? I think we need to review this because I was confused with this, you know, too. I, mm -hmm. I got the impression that employees have to get approval from the supervisor or city, administ or city administrator to be either be a member of those de fire department or ambulance. Is that right? Yes, I think they've always had to be. They have to ask, okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, may not participate well in COVID. And I understand if they're in a, a trench and they're working on water mains and, and whatever, they can't just up and leave. Up and leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's not what it says, Patty. It says on call. I know. Well, no one's going to be in a trench on call. But I know that, but that's an, I'm just voicing something that concerns me. Okay. 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 I think it probably could be a little clearer, and I, I, I would like to think about it reword it too as we this is the first we've gotten it like you said mm -hmm. um, now when they're on call are like for the weekend or on call in the evening mm -hmm. it's kind of what you're thinking mm -hmm. okay yeah I'm open to making it easier to understand but I'm not sure what that looks like so I'm asking for direction okay so like what do they what do they do right now on call when they're on call in the evening uh, this is kind of directed toward uh, the water and wastewater checks on the weekend. You know, there's they go in and check uh, um, at least four times okay. each day, and just afraid that if if they're out on that call, then the the checks aren't being done. Yeah. So yeah, it's just hard to say you can't go or you can go or you just. How Use often discretion. Do, how, do they rotate on call? Right now we have two that are able to rotate, so it's every other weekend. They yeah. have to be certified. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know how often they were on call if you had a group of them that were rotating every so many weeks. Yeah, or it's just the two certified we have right now. Okay. Um, eventually we'll get to three, okay. um, so that'll help alleviate yeah. that. Yeah. But it just so happens, too, that two of them are on that same department. Right, and that's yeah, kind of where the issue And we kind of knew lies. that with hiring, hiring him, but he was the best candidate, so we... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can't hire him based on that, I get that. Right, but yeah. Okay, so He's also the best fireman out here. <laughs> so the, is that four times per day based on the old manual system? Does the new electronic monitoring allow some freedom on the four checks a day? Um, no, because they... Uh, 
from what I'm told, they need to go in and visually check some of those and verify pumps because not everything is on that system. You can you can catch some stuff with that system, but not everything. Yeah, the visual is <coughs> is what really needs to. So, is the city limits a definitive enough boundary for? Like if they're on call or working yeah. outside of city limits, then then they're just restricted to in town fires. Maybe is that? Yeah. Yeah. You right know, but at, at the at the same time, someone's got to be around to check the pressures in the tower, the the water right. uh, mains, right. and and make sure that the the towers are up too. So it's yeah, it's just a double edged it's a double edged yeah. sword. If we had a lineman that was on the fire department and it was a house fire, well, his first thing is to get the power off to the building so that firemen can enter safely. Mm -hmm. And then he can go about the fire duties. So it's, you know, city workers are, are you have to juggle both jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, you know, love to everyone to be able to go to a house fire for sure or a structure fire in town. Well, but the way this is worded, your electrician could go and turn off the electricity, but then he's got to go back. He can't be then a fireman. Yeah, yeah. right. Can't That's do, what your ordinance says. Can't do both. Yeah. Right. But it, do, it doesn't say that. It says that it's at the discretion of the supervisor based on workload. So I think the language does provide discretion. I mean, if the supervisor says there's nothing left to do. The supervisor won't be there. It's the weekend. <laughs> yeah, th this is kind of two different sections. It's, it's the on call on the weekend, and then it's during the day workload type of thing so yeah we're open to suggestion on the yeah. on call is that where the concern is is the on call because they are like saying that. that he may not right go right okay that's why I'm Very asking I mean I, yeah. I have heard from the fire department and I have heard indirectly through ambulance that you know this kind of makes it sound like you don't want them to serve no, and I've had a discussion with the fire chief that that's not our intent at all. But we have duties within the city that I, have to be done. Mm -hmm. But that's the impression you left. Well, that wasn't my intent. That doesn't solve the impression issue. Nope, it doesn't. Has any has, has everybody or some, who's all met with this and discussed it before coming here? So the um, management committee for the council has seen this and reviewed it. What's the management committee? It consists of Rob, Travis, Rick, and myself. Yeah. Not you or me, Patty, for sure. No, I just <laughs> was not aware there was a management committee. I wasn't aware of that. So I didn't, what, what, what do they do? What does it do? We looked at the wording and, and uh, thought I'm, the wording could be presented to the council. Right. Basically, that was it. When all the, it, I guess I'm trying to understand what it is. Historically, I think it was it was it created uh, um, when the negotiation with the union, so that a committee of the two councilmen and the mayor could meet with Mike and and hash out the negotiation of wages and stuff like that, without bringing the full thing to the council first. I believe that's the way it was started. You correct me if mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what. That's well, clearly not the way it's being used. I just oh, I don't know. We just we got together and wanted to present this, and we looked at it. Uh, we're bringing it to you guys for further input. I don't think that any, no changes have been made at this point. Uh, it's pretty out and open. This is okay. I just didn't wasn't aware of that management committee. How long has it been? Same people for a long time. No. Oh, I I've, just, only I don't on, know. I've only been on it for like a couple of years. So. I don't know. I didn't know what it was. I think Shit. maybe a year. I, I, year. A year. Oh, okay. Give okay, let's get back to. Um, let's get off that subject. Mm. Well, this clarification. How would you like? How would you like it to be worded? I'd like to review a little bit more in depth. I can get a printout and just and think it through. I, well, yeah, you asked for input, we gave it to you. I, that's what I'd like to do. I see some of these that are definitely, I, I, I totally get them in some of those other sections. I just, 
I, I wouldn't want to vote on it right now or sit here and say no it's. No one's voting on it right now. Right. We're just looking at. I the understand direction. that. Right. I wish she told me. I'm going to step in here because this is completely normal within city government to have subcommittees to review things to be efficient. Whether that's a management committee, whether that's a park and recs, whether that's a personnel, the purpose is to put something before the council so we don't spend the government's time and money going through things that aren't necessary for 10 people to review. And yet here we are. And yet here we are. So the subcommittee has met for its purpose. If there's specific direction on whatever's highlighted, great, let's give feedback to the committee so we can move forward to present it for a vote. If you don't like the changes upon the vote, vote no. Hmm. I, I was not aware of a management committee, so I asked about it. First of all, with it. and the second of all, I just all I asked for is if I could review it. Why is it making you angry? Because it's you can review it. They're great. Why review is it, it making you angry though? Because we need to move forward on the agenda and go through the list. Want to spend really? a lot of time and money, or not a lot of money, a lot of time going through this. A lot of money. So we need to go through the changes and give her the direction. I'm very well aware of that. I would like to have a copy. I'll stop in and pick it up. Wow. So I'm going to move on to page 120. <clears throat> this section is talking about holiday pay for police officers. Um, and Corey, you can jump in here at any point. Um, but this section was because when our officers were getting paid for holiday pay on top of their regular pay, is that correct? Yeah, <clears throat> what it was was considered holiday premium pay, so they would get their holiday um, as a standard eight hours, but then if they worked that as well, um, they got time and a half on top of it. <clears throat> we found that uh, a lot of our newer officers would much rather have the time off versus the pay, um, and I, I'm just trying to, uh, especially if you're a first or second year officer, you don't really have a lot of time off, and that's what they're looking for and it's just an easier way for us to to manage that and provide that to them without it costing the city anything more so it's just taking that uh, extra eight hours eight times a year and just letting them use that as a, kind of like a floating holiday instead so any questions or comments on that okay I'm gonna keep moving then the next section talks about vacation pay um, So this section, we are, our benefits, our health insurance and our flex are moving from a f um, fiscal year to a calendar year beginning January 1st of 2023. So in order to facilitate that ease for our um, employees, we wanted to move our vacation leave to that same cycle. It, right now it's on a fiscal, so come July 1st, everybody gets their vacation. So what we would like to do is move that to a January 1st in a calendar year um, uh, occurrence, I guess. Um, but understanding that the July period from uh, this year, 2022, till the end of the year will be, or actually it's 18 months of transition with their vacations and they're fully aware that um, we're moving into a transition when we talked with staff. So the other thing that we have changed is the years of completed service on January 1st. Um, the same thing that Corey brought up with um, is our newer employees. It almost took them three Julys before they actually had two weeks of vacation. And in this hiring environment, that's almost unrealistic. So what we are looking at is when they've had one month of service with us up to seven years and that they would get 10 days um, on January 1st. That's if they start um, before December 1st of that year. Um, we also changed the seven years that I believe before it was nine. So we've moved that up a little bit so they get 15 years in that next level um, a year sooner. And then the eight, from eight to 14 used to be eight to 15. And again, we moved the 15 years that they were eligible for the 20 years. So giving our um, staff some um, extra benefits that don't necessarily cost us a great deal. Um, and makes it easier for us as we look to um, hire people, which will, it's a continual process for us. Um, I think, 
one more change. One of the other things on the vacation leave, um, employees that were in that first level, that one month to seven years could carry over five days, but any of the other employees that had been here a long time could not carry over any days. So what happens in our cycle right now, um, and Travis can probably speak to this better, is we were having people hold days for the month of June so that they had days available just in case something came up. So come June, when we're starting to hit projects really hard, we had lots of people gone on vacation. So what we're hoping to do is allow them to take those two, take two days and they can move it into the next cycle so not everybody's sitting on those two days of vacation or whatever, um, uh, holding those and, and we're going through a whole month that there's a lot of vacation when we need people to be here. So it would move that from, and if we do move it from a fiscal to a calendar year, it would be the same thing. We'd have people holding vacation in December um, over the holidays where this way they can still carry two over. Um, I think that was it in the vacation. Any questions about, that's probably the biggest change for us. Um, it is something that we've had conversations, several conversations with our, our staff and they seem to be very receptive of this. So um, any comments, anything that you see that you would like to have us take a deeper dive at or change? Okay, I'm gonna keep moving. Uh, the next area is our sick leave. Um, so the biggest thing here was sick leave for our employees could only be used for our employees and another um, benefit that we wanted to extend to staff was to be able to use sick leave for um, a child or a parent. They would only be able to use sick leave in the current year. So right now they get a day a month. And in the current year, they would be able to use that for um, if they had a sick child or a sick parent. We've um, defined who's um, eligible for that in their immediate family as according to the FMLA. Um, to make that a little bit easier. So that would be a benefit to them. Anything that they keep in their pool um, would not be able to be used for family members. It could only be used for um, themselves. So anything that any vacation or excuse me, any sick leave that they hadn't used if we go to the calendar cycle on December 31st would be going into their bucket of um, saved sick leave, but that could only be used for themselves. Any questions? Okay. The last item that we were um, suggesting a change to was adding in the bereavement leave. Currently, it only includes immediate family, which is spouse, the child, uh, their children, a mother, father, brother, sisters. But we want to add in the step family piece to that um, to help with anybody that's in a blended family that they would be able to use bereavement leave for those individuals if they had passed away. Those are the changes that we are suggesting for the personnel policy. Is there anything else that we've missed that you would like us to take a look at or anything that um, you want us to take out or change? One thing I do want to note is um, this has gone to the um, union rep. Yes, thank you. And they are going to be reviewing it and they will be voting on it. Uh, in my conversation with him, um, he didn't see anything that would be a, an issue. It's all to um, the betterment of the, uh, in the union staff. So I anticipate that that will happen um, before July 1st. <clears throat> Tell you everything good other than the um First volunteer service type of thing. Then we'll look to do um, we'll look to do something different on or see if we can clarify the volunteer service piece um, and maybe get that out to you ahead of time so you have that. Um, yeah, and I, I unless there's something else that you want us to take a look at and change, that's where we'll spend our time. No, I think that's good to uh, look at that. Uh, the volunteer thing and uh, see if it can be worded a little mm -hmm. better maybe for lack of words but sure. you can certainly do that okay thank you Wanda for your work with that do 
we need any um, this will just come back next meeting it'll come back next meeting for a vote and it will be the personnel policy as a whole. We won't be doing individual pieces of it. Okay. Gen item number seven, presentation of the fiscal year 2022 second budget amendment and setting a public <laughs> hearing on budget amendment for June 22nd, 2022, published public hearing notice. So, so moved. <laughs> a motion by Monty. I'll second it. Seconded by Rob. <clears throat> He probably better explain for the people, the six people that watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically what happened was um, on the actual state form, I just marked one of the sections that we had um, amended in the First Amendment that we did last meeting. I just put it in the wrong box. So I have to take it out of that box and put it into the correct box on this amendment. We got your back, Kate. <laughs> Thanks for your honesty with that. Call for a roll call vote then for that, please. Olson. Aye. Harvey. Yep. Feldacker. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Bucky. Aye. A five to zero roll call vote. That passes. Gen item number eight, resolution 2022-22, setting a public hearing and ordering a notice of publication to consider changes to the Hayward and Zoning Ordinance. So a little history on this. Um, prior to my starting here, and I want to say it was probably two years ago, that FEMA came out and redid our, our flood maps, and we've been talking about that a little bit. Part of what happens is our, res, our um, code specifically has a flood chapter, and the Iowa DNR has recommended that we um, repeal that and replace it with the new one. And in that process, the Planning and Zoning Commission has to approve any of those changes because they're zoning related. So they met and in your packet was their recommendations. And I will go through Sorry, there's a lot of here, a lot here. Um, one thing I do want to explain to you in the ordinance that's proposed in front of you, um, anything that is um, yellowed is new to the existing ordinance that we have. Anything that um, is not yellowed is already in our current um, flood ordinance. So the biggest, um, or one of the items that we're, that we're changing or that they're suggesting, the Iowa DNR is suggesting that we change in our flood um, management is the definition under substantial damage. The optional language, there are um, a number of these in the uh, document. When the Planning and Zoning Commission met, um, as a whole, they decided that a lot of that they did not want to accept the optional language or the alternate language because it was more restrictive. So as we go through these, um, for example, the first one, the substantial damage, they're opting not to use the optional language. They'd like to leave the language as is. Um, one thing that the commission talked about was having to do the monitoring if um, there is a flood in a 10 year period, who keeps track of that? you know, on each structure that that would happen. So that was their concern. So they have um, recommending to the council that we leave the um, initial language that is there. The same thing on the substantial improvement, the next one, they um, have asked or recommended that we do not use the alternate language because again, it is more restrictive and leave it to the original uh, language that we currently have. The next one is the alternate language um, that talks about historic structures. They again asked or recommended that we leave the current language in place. The next section. The next section talks about um, residential structures and the optional language language suggests that this be brought before the Board of Adjustment. Um, they felt that having the Board of Adjustment try to understand the floodplain management policy was um, probably a lot because this is going to be a periodic maybe once in their career as a member of that board um, that they would have to look at this. They felt more comfortable leaving it as is and not having that go to the Board of Adjustment. 
that it would be decided at the um, permit level. The next item is alternate language. Um, this talked about on a structure that was new or improved as to where the openings would be to manage the floodwaters. Um, we had quite a bit of discussion about this um, in the Planning and Zoning Commission and the alternate language suggests that it has to be two separate walls. The language that is currently in place only says that there has to be two openings and it could be on the same wall. They felt more comfortable leaving it without the alternate language. Um, the next area was the optional language. Um, they um, opted to not use the optional again because it is more restrictive and without having a dedicated um, building inspector or person of that nature, this gets pretty hard to manage. Um, that may be, I believe that that is the last one. So moved. And a motion by Travis. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by John. What's the motion for? To set a public hearing. Setting the public hearing, yep. Any other questions or thoughts? Jenny, do you want to talk about the... Sure. The only other thought I would have is that I, or comment, in speaking with Jason Kahn from the DNR, um, every city within Sioux County is having to do this. Um, basically, all of the cities within Sioux County um, have received the, the new maps. Um, this has become effective on August 2nd. Since Hay Warden participates in FEMA's National Flood Insurance Program, the city is required to adopt this ordinance. This wasn't created by Wander or committee or anyone. This was created by the DNR. And in order to qualify, this ordinance has to be adopted um, before the August 2nd date, which we have plenty of time to do that. Not plenty of time, but we have time. We have sufficient time. So if we waive the yes, first two readings. Yep. So, um, yeah, without it, then the city is not going to be eligible to participate in the FEMA program. We waive those the next meeting, though, correct? Correct. correct. <clears throat> Typical DNR big stick. Yeah. But this will remove the existing flood chapter that we have and replace it entirely with this. So as long as you are okay with what the Planning and Zoning Commission has recommended, then we can move ahead with a resolution. I just want to make sure that everybody is on board with that before we go any further. Okay, I'll move there's Afford been a motion there's... by Travis, a second by John for resolution 2022-22, setting the public hearing and ordering a notice of publication. Roll call vote, please, for resolution 2022-22. Feldhacker. Aye. Harvey. Yeah. Anderson. Aye. Lucky. Aye. Olson. Aye. On a five to zero roll call vote, resolution 22-22 passes. <laughs> Agenda item number nine, approval of a special events application and hold harmless agreement with Kyle Huffman for the Hayward and Truck and Tractor Pool. Give us an overview, please. Uh, this is an um, annual event that they hold. Last year, um, I believe Mike put together the um, application which streamlines this process. Um, previously, when they were doing the lease they were leasing it for the entire year which is the ballpark um, and out that way um, this way it leaves us to be able to rent that or lease that out to other organizations that want to use that throughout the summer um, the demo derby is one of them that comes to mind so um, we have not received the insurance on this yet I before we will issue this hold um, this permit uh, or this lease, we will make sure that we have the adequate insurance in place for that. But otherwise, it's pretty uh, straightforward as far as um, the other department heads have um, signed off on it. And um, yeah, just waiting for the insurance. Their insurance. 
Yes, they, they have to give us an insurance policy. Yes, correct. So find theirs and not. Yes, yeah. No, it's not ours. They have to have a, the insurance policy. Other questions? Is there a motion for approval of the special events application? So moved. Moved by Rob. Is there a second? Second. Second by Travis. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> that passes five to zero. We have two consent agenda items tonight. Approval of uh, cigarette and tobacco permits for Casey's <clears throat> Dollar General Sunshine and Quick Corner and a request to uh, transfer liquor license June 18th from uh, Sportsman's. All the paperwork is correct and in. Okay. So moved. Moved by Travis. Is there a <coughs> second? Second. Second by John. All in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? That passes five to zero. Our next regular meeting will be right back here, June 22nd. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Moved by Rob. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by John. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Thank you for your attendance.